So let's go ahead with the slide. I'm going to talk about data mining and the environment. And it's going to hurt your head. I'm known for giving headaches to people. We're going to talk a lot about that for two hours on Sunday morning. Let's get into it. It's a, this is a picture of me. Now, you know it's a picture of me. Isn't that astounding? It's like 10 lines, 20 lines, and I drew me. That's the message. My background is physics and Harley-Davidson. So that's about sizes me up. <clears throat> that's a dog. I want to tell you about a journey I had with my dogs. I was on a, probably a cool fish thing, which lasts forever. And I was on a trip, and I came home one night. And I live in New Hampshire. We had four inches of snow, 20 degrees. The windows were up, and I was in a rental. I park, and I go to put my key in the back door. And my three dogs, two Rottweilers and a Terrier, did not bark. How did they know? Couldn't sleep very well. Next day, I had a postdoc intern from mathematics from McGill University in Canada. And we started working on it. We found that, lo and behold, the dogs were looking at a set of measurements, all very poorly made and inaccurate as hell. But the accuracy of the set was proportional to the exponent of the number of measurements, not the scalar value of them. Whoa. <coughs> What's this? So you forget it for a while, and we get a patent on it, which is useless. I don't believe in patents particularly. But you've got a, you got a thing that says, maybe if I make a lot of stupid measurements, I'll be better off than one big one. Then I remember the cat. I got a Nobel Prize on the cat. They wanted to see what the visual cortex of a cat actually represented in its vision space. Stuck probes in the cortex, about 1955, 56, something like that. And then the cat, cat was, did not, there was no picture. It looked like product codes you see on the back. It's just garbage. It was like you took a black and white jigsaw puzzle and threw it on the floor. There was no connection with anything. But the cat obviously worked in that domain. They could move the slide and the things would fire up, and then they'd put a circle up, nothing would happen. It was a wonderful set of series. Okay, Dick, what's that got to do with this? Well, I went to the Museum of Art. I, was, I had four knee replacements, and I'm in a wheelchair. My wife says, you're going to the art museum. What, me, a certified geek, going to an art museum? Yeah, she wanted to see New York. They, post-magazine artist. So I'm going through the modern abstract art, and I stop suddenly, because on the wall is a painting of the cat's retina image. Those artists were painting what they see, not what they should see. Because I was giving this talk, I said, I wonder if they know that. Sure enough, you look on the web, I didn't talk to <clears> any. <throat> But I went on the web and they said, yeah, they know that. Those character characterizations are supposed to evoke an image from you, not give you the image. We said, that's cool. That's pretty cool. So then we say, what is this use? What good is this stuff that I'm telling you? Well, I'm, in, I'm an old guy, so I was at MIT when they were doing 21, the movie. The movie's pretty accurate, by the way. 21, poker, and roulette, the guy with the computer on his foot, shoe. And we invested in a poker player. He was you know, one of these 180 IQ mathematicians, knew the status of everything. Got out to Las Vegas, and he was winning like crazy. We were feeling we were rich. We already knew that you could make it up by getting selfish, so we played. He got to Las Vegas, he got his clock cleaned. They weren't playing poker, they were playing you. They could tell by your motions what cards you hold. Sunglasses be damned. Hat with a peak be damned. How you reach for the part, poker chips. You've had it. As I said, I want to talk about my wife who can count cards in 21. They found a way to get around her, by the way. So I'm curious as to whether or not you can be on the right road or the left road. Now, the right road means the right brain. I'm saying that we don't represent warnings to computers. We don't do ab object space. We're doing some of that right here with this is search on vision. 
but there's no algorithm. Now, the big thing about this is substantially reduced computer power substantially increases, decreases the time to make a decision. I do it with a PC. It's not a big deal. Here's an actual application we're doing. We take a big monster motor. There's big monster motors that we do with 1,000 horsepower motors, electric motors, up to 3,000 horsepower. Boats, tugboats, electric trains, locomotives. And we want to know when, when they're going to go bad ahead of time. So this is really what we do. We take a big motor, big thing, and slide a box under it with no wires, no connections. It looks at vibration. It looks at temperature. It looks at the electromagnetic field and deduces whether the motor is healthy. And we even get power from scavenging the electromagnetic fields. And you just put it under the box. Go to your iPad, and there's the warning sites. Now, we don't do an analysis. That we leave to you, gentlemen, ladies, too. But we don't do the analysis. So that's predictive asset management. We are predicting what's going to happen. It substantially reduces the likelihood of a black swan. And if this doesn't give you a headache, nothing will. See you Sunday. Thank you.